Sure, I can suspend my disbelief yeah. when it comes to them being actors and them playing these roles. What I can't suspend my disbelief on is Michael Bay being a fucking NASA scientist. Yeah. We're moving to Hubble. <laughs> <laughs> But what I want to talk about next is uh, one of the biggest selling points of this. That's not explosions, which really? is the crew. Mm. You know, because I, I saw the posters they had of like Michael Clark Duncan and and Bruce Willis and Liv Tyler for some reason <laughs> and Brett Ben Affleck and all yeah. the, all the characters that you could possibly want. Not Owen Wilson because he wasn't a big star then. But shame, shame. I I want an Armageddon Photoshop of uh, Owen, Owen Wilson. Wilson with his cowboy hat, yeah. saying "Wow." Oh, and wow. so space, sp- the final frontier, space cowboy, and so. With that, you know, you have this ensemble cast, if mm-hmm. you will, of all these you know stars from the '90s that are all talented actors, and yeah. for some, and, and in a lot of ways, a lot of comedic actors, <laughs> yeah, in, in the same type of way, you yeah. know. And so, you know, it's a cast that I surprisingly know a lot about. I said Bruce Willis, mm-hmm. uh, Ben Affleck, Michael Clark Duncan, Steve Buscemi, Billy Bob Thornton. So you really don't have to tell me much to get who these guys are, or what they're about. Mm-hmm. And that said, they're all kind of playing these weird mixed roles in this film because. Steve Buscemi is like a genius man whore, like a genius. Like he was like 20 when he got a double degree at like Harvard. Which is a sentence that you always think of when you think of Steve Buscemi. You go, oh, that guy, valedictorian man whore. Well, Owen Wilson's a genius cowboy. Well, that I actually do believe. And Bruce Willis is a genius oil drill. Okay, I think they're just things plus genius. (laughs) Yeah, they're all secret genius. Michael Clark Duncan is a genius wrench puller. I don't know what he does. He's a... He lifts things. Motorcyclist. I don't know. He strips at one point. Maybe he's a genius stripper. Oh, don't worry. He's a genius stripper for sure. But, yeah, yeah. you know, there's, there's maybe it's not much of a mixture, but, you know, the movie wants us to know who these people are and what mm-hmm. they're about. Yeah. And, and to start, Harry, you know, Bruce Willis plays a lot of different things. He's mostly the same guy. <laughs> mostly Bruce Willis. But he has different motivations most of the time. And so to set up Harry, <laughs> there's a lot of dense stuff to be unpacked, and a lot of it is really weird and or contradictory. I gave you 50000 a year in donations! I could stay away. Oh. Oh, who wouldn't be mad? <laughs> Only in a Michael Bay movie. That wall fucking exploded. I'm just saying, man, this is a weird dude. Okay, so I had to write it down as I as I have to do. Mm. Greenpeace donator who assaults them with golf balls. Okay. Okay. That's fair. I mean he works in an oil rig. Okay. Blue collar guy. Yeah. Bruce Willis. Yeah. Who's literally shoot a shotgun around around. A oil rig, With an oil rig. All of his employees just being like, oh, well, that's just Bruce. Because he had sex with his daughter, who's also on the oil rig around a bunch of men. It's, now, mm-hmm. I'm not saying anything like that. It's 2018. I wouldn't. What I am saying, and what they say in the film, you know, she's, she's supposed to be like 18. Sure, why not? Sure. She's supposed to be a young woman yeah. who has agency. And is on an oil rig surrounded by oh, burly, oh, strong men. She reminds you multiple times, Dad, stop controlling my life. Dad, stop controlling my life. And also, Ben Affleck, could you resist, really? I mean, I mean really. Come just Come on. Come, show. I mean, ooh. I... Ooh. Ooh, that, ooh. Oh, that Affleck. Oh. But young, dreamy Affleck. But beyond the boner for Affleck, you know, in this... <laughs> portrayal of Bruce Willis is some weird patriotic wet dream going on like yeah. he protects his daughter and he owns a million dollar oil rig and uh, he guy, has friends and a black friend even. if this guy had come back from space totally would have voted for Trump exactly and for spoilers oh shit I'm just kidding no. oh my god but for me, it's almost it's almost hard for me to root for him right away because he's all over the place like okay he's a Greenpeace supporter which I, I don't really give a shit about Greenpeace personally mm-hmm. but like okay he's nice enough to care about the environment but it's like hitting with golf balls like an asshole shooting a dude with a shotgun on an oil rig is also not very smart I think a large part of that might come from the fact that this movie went through like nine writers while they were shooting it. So if characters seem inconsistent, you know, oh, that there's might one, be why. There's one in near the end where I'm like, what is happening? And, that's, and the reasoning they give is the dumb. And that's the thing. Like, there's only a couple of names on the movie itself. I think it's like Shane Solero and J.J. Abrams, of all people. Wait, what? Did you not catch that? I did yeah. not catch J.J. J. Abrams is one of, one of the writers on this, yeah. Is it J. Um, Jonah Abrams no, on that, this? No, that J.J. Abrams. Like, oh, okay. fucking Mr. Star Wars himself. Um, but there were a bunch of writers on this, so and they were just like constantly rewriting it while they were shooting it. So the fact that yeah, like the characters are inconsistent from moment to moment, that's probably why. If fair, I would take a guess. Fair enough, I yeah. would say. But 
okay, so Harry gets called to the FBI, mm. and NASA is trying to figure out, you know, how to drill this thing, right? Okay. Yeah. And so then they do, like, the coolest Avengers Assemble scene in oh. a non-Avengers movie ever. This is, like, the best, like, let's get the gang together montage ever. Yeah, and it, it'd be one thing if they just said that, like, yep, these are these guys are the best at what they do. These guys are the hot shots of oil rigging or drilling or whatever the fuck they're doing. But then there's an amazing edit that cuts all of that, like, epicness all the way down. Come and get Papa Bear! <laughs> What's up, Harry? Did NASA find oil on your anus, man? <laughs> Guys, this is like deep blue hero stuff. I want a whole movie with just Owen Wilson's character. Like, if he survived him going back to space, being like, oh, wow, this is deep blue hero stuff. I I'm a hero. I'm a hero. I saved the Earth. By the way, and going off this scene, but really, it, it, so just before I want to get to the fun, funny part that mm. follows me after this, mm. you know, even after they kind of cut, like, the party's over, it's like, oh, shit, we, the world is going to end. And they're just kind of like done fucking around for yeah. a minute and they're actually taking it seriously it's really good at letting you know where people stand because that goes on and it tell it shows you like the fat guy who's just the fat guy in the movie is like cat uh, kind of a coward and doesn't do anything other guys like well i can't let him go alone the other guys like i've never let you down before steve shammy's like where's the money at you know well, and that's the thing this movie does a really great job of using essentially using cinematic shorthand using stock characters that we've seen before but using them really well and i think in, in uh by having like great actors play them you know, you kind of get everybody's roles and you and you buy that these guys are friends. Right. You know, you get the sense of camaraderie against these guys just in that one scene. Yeah. And you get it right away, but especially if hell, I don't watch that many movies mm -hmm. and I know who all these people are. and I know kind of their their uh, piece of the puzzle, you yeah. know. And so honestly, that scene would have been enough for me to be like. That's it. Well, yeah, and it kind of works because you go, well, of course Michael Clark Duncan's like the crazy dude. And, of course, you know, Steve Buscemi is like the kind of Weasley horn dog, you know. And, of course, Owen Wilson is Owen Wilson. Right. And, honestly, that would have been enough. But this movie goes, you know what? Nah, we need to make them get prostate exams. And it's just like they, they do and then they go through all this testing and it just gets ridiculous at certain yeah. points. Only to tell us that they're incompetent to do this job, which we already know. Oh, gee, lady, I just came here to drill. Oh, so did I. Well, at least they're in good spirits. Like, honestly, you didn't need that. Was is it funny that that Michael yeah. Clark Duncan does that? Well, that, is, that is, yes. Yeah, is all the other stuff in the scene? Not really, not and, at all. And that's another thing with Michael that's Bay. A, that's a beefy man right there. Shh, I'm terrified. Fun fact of that, of, fun fact about Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah. Would have loved to play football, and I want to say rumored would have loved to play for the Oakland Raiders. Huh. His mom wouldn't sign the permission slip for football. Ah. Like she, she would not let him play football, and so he became a bouncer. Like but, you do, but whatever. Um, uh, it's funny though, because like it, with a lot of Michael Bay movies. I get the sense that Michael Bay thinks he's he's a lot funnier than he actually is, oh, and so you'll have like someone I know. Oh, and so you'll, well, oh, Jesus, shut so up! So you'll have scenes like that where it's like this doesn't really serve the plot, and I mean, yeah, Michael Clark Duncan's funny, but the whole scenario of like, and now we got to get prostate exams, it's like I'm sure Michael Bay and frat bros are the only people who find this funny. The rest of us are just kind of like. Okay, like the world's about to end. You want to fucking get on with it? Like we get it. Yeah. You're you're incompetent. You're oil driller. Yeah. Not, and I'm you've not already, saying oil drillers are incompetent. No, but it's like you've already proved that. Like the nasty guys are like, oh fuck, we're in, we're in over our head. These guys aren't fit for the job. It's like you've proved that point three times already. We don't need it proved a fourth with an ass joke. But I mean, there was one part of this that I did really like about this whole training montage, mm -hmm. beside all the stupid <laughs> shenanigans that they get in, and that was the agreement that Bruce Willis made that the guys get ten hours. To kind of close out their lives, yeah. you know? That concept to me was like, all right, that's cool. Like, hey, my guys, they need to know what they're fucking fighting for. They've been, you know, running around like a bunch of dumb monkeys being tested through all these things. Let them go back and, and handle their shit. Mm. And so it's like, okay, you know, this. I know this scene was put together for the for every demographic of this movie. Like, for like the... the <laughs> Like for like the strip the club the goers. Okay, so yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to get down. No, I don't want to start there, but like it's like that. Oh, that's the my favorite club. though. I, I side. I fucking love that. He's just like, all right, hundred grand on a strip club. Fuck it, let's go. For all we know, tomorrow night could be the last night they ever see Earth. I don't think it's too much to ask to let them spend it with their families. Way down. 
I mean, who hasn't put a, a animal cracker in a Dude, vagina? Am I right? <laughs> I like using the circus crackers myself. <laughs> you, do you go? We would totally be these guys. That was the anniversary party. That was that was, that was what happened. Like, you're not that you're not that wrong actually. Except we're not a bunch of NASA oil drillers. Like and we don't go into the club with a hundred thousand dollars, except for Martin. Right, and mm, made it last anyway. And so you know, you got these guys that are pretty much you know dumbass geniuses that are. They're lovable. That, they're, that, they're, relatable. they're lovable and they're yeah. relatable, and it all works out for them. And they glorify the hell out of these dumbasses, like they would in real life. Like, mm-hmm. if you were to like watch it on the news, you know, yeah. like something like this happened. The world's ending, and they got these guys getting fucking drunk at strip clubs, getting getting in bar fights and stuff. But then when you're watching the news, you get these like real glorified images of these heroes with the, like the nice kind of glaze over them that everything's all right, and. You know, after all, you know, what were the first astronauts other than a bunch of crazy dudes ready to die? You know, like yeah. you can't tell me that Buzz Aldrin or Neil Armstrong were like, we're going to go on this ship and we're going to be heroes. No, they were like, this could blow up underneath us. We're probably going to fucking die. Or if we even make it up there, we might never make it back. Oh, definitely. That's why I like astronauts are like some of the most confident badasses you'll ever meet in life because they're like, fuck it. I, I've been through it all. What, what is death? Right. And at the same time, right after we get those dramatic shots of them all lined up, it always cuts back to them doing some normal everyday shit. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, so I kind of like the way it played with these guys is like, oh, yeah, they're real American heroes, but they're also a bunch of fuck ups and they're also a bunch of dumbasses and they're also a bunch of real people. Because I'm leaving on a jet plane. (laughs) I'd be that guy. I'd be that guy singing the high note and like the random. Uh, yeah, uh, keys and shit for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh, it'd be great. But and that's the thing, though. I mean, that's probably my favorite part of the movie is just kind of the way these all these people all interact. Mm-hmm. It it doesn't hurt that I like all of them as actors to begin with. Yeah, but at the same time, they all kind of work together in their own special way. And, and their camaraderie working, their relationships working helps you. Oh, sorry, helps you buy into the ridiculousness <laughs> of this movie. That when shit does get crazy, you're like, all right. I can kind of go with it this now because I have a grounding. Yeah, and you know? you know what? I may see them all as actors, mm-hmm. but you know, sure, I can suspend my disbelief yeah. when it comes to them being actors and them playing these roles. What I can't suspend my disbelief on is Michael Bay being a fucking NASA scientist. That's sweet call. Yes. Yeah, this is flight director. I want to get that Hubble moving, and I want it now. Okay. We're moving to Hubble. Right there. Okay. Got stuff to do. Hold on. Got paperwork here. Hold on, let's go back there. No, play that first part again because he has the most dramatic closing of a book I have ever seen. Let's let's try it one more oh time. Let's God. try it on for size right now. We're moving to Hubble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Michael Bay, it. you you're not M Night Shyamalan, man. You can't just put yourself uh, as no. a NASA scientist. No, I want him to act more because he gives some fucking blue steel performance right there. He is just acting the shit out. I'm going to close this book and I'm going to open up this spreadsheet. And the thing is, so like now we're getting to the dumb shit because there's a mean streak of dumb shit in this movie because there's a lot of serious stuff. There's a lot of good stuff even, Mm -hmm. but then there's a lot of just dumb shit, man. But then they go to space. And (laughs) let's start with their plan of how this is going down. Now, people, I know the real controversy that people say what the problem of this real movie is. We'll get to that right after this. But just the plan itself yes. is completely stupid, and they know it. Are you suggesting that we blow this thing up from the inside? That's exactly what I'm saying. How? We drill. We bring in the world's best deep core driller. <laughs> Are you saying we blow this up from the inside? Yes. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm not arguing with, quote unquote, the smartest man in the world. <laughs> Because that exists. The smartest uh, man in the world exists in I this world. I love this movie. <laughs> and so, okay, you know what? All right, so if you must, yeah. you must dig in and blow the whole goddamn thing up. All right, you you must do that. I can accept that it's the core concept of this movie. Yeah. Sure, I'll go along with it, right? So you're going to get astronauts, and you're going to train them how to, how to dig, right? How to drill. Train astronauts to yeah. drill. Because you only have 18 days. In, instead of training astronauts to drill, okay. instead... Of drillers training to astronaut, you know, like my God, man. And the thing is, everyone says, why not just train NASA scientists to drill? 
Obviously, it's a skill that you can learn pretty, not easily, but they're NASA scientists. But it's a skill that you can learn faster than learning how to astronaut. <laughs> exactly. But it's a valid question. They say, oh, how can this movie fucking happen if that's the core problem of this? Mm. And this question is answered in the movie. A lot of people forget that there is a legitimate reason. I think I'm forgetting. That he gives for why they can't do it. Doing it all my life. And I still haven't got it all figured out. If you want to send these boys into space, fine. I'm sure they'll make good astronauts. But they don't know jack about drilling. All they got to do is drill. That's it. No spacewalking, no crazy astronaut stuff. Just drill. No crazy astronaut stuff, like spacewalking or fueling. Or the fact that you're going to be flying into a fucking asteroid. And looping around the moon. No, no, no. It'll be fine. All, literally, the only thing they have to do is drill. That's it, it takes... Grit. It takes an art and to master how to drill. Astronauts have none of that. I will tell you that right now. Not the top young intellectual prospects of NASA. No. They don't know the art. No. They don't know the art, Ian. And so with that, <laughs> they can get there safely and do the damn thing, perhaps. But the blue-collar geniuses that I crew every day are the guys that are going to save the world. They're the ones that know how to drill. Okay. Cut to the next scene. <laughs> because surely we can learn the NASA stuff pretty quickly. That's the premise. Mm, uh, look, on it. Okay. And yeah. that, no, but you say there's it, no it's, reason. It's ridiculous. That was his reason. His reason was, okay, my look. guys can drill. That was his reason. That's not a fucking reason. All right, look. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's insane. We've all talked about it. We're all like, yeah, we acknowledge it's stupid, but look, you're either going to go with it or you're not going to go with it because that's – the whole movie hinges on it. So either you're on board with the stupidity of it or, sorry, this is what, this is when you need to step off. Like, the movie's not for you. See, and that's why if we have another asteroid coming or whatever, we can get like uh, all the Trump swamp fishermen. No, no, we take no. all the Trump supporters and we put them in a rocket and we throw them at the asteroid. No, I was saying get some swamp fishermen because they have, like, the proper tools. Yeah. They have the proper grip. Yeah, Duck Dynasty put them in space. Exactly. Yeah. Duck Dynasty spacemen. In there you space. go. Sp spawned it. No, no that's what it's going to be. It's going to be an alien invasion movie where they have to get, like, fucking armadillo hunters. And they're going to have to go up and fight them because armadillo hunting is the one specific skill that astronauts can't learn. Can we make this movie? Because this sounds kind of badass. Armadillo hunters, uh, uh, the, the crab fishermen, yeah. um, uh, the gator guys, the ones that hunt the gators. Let's do I it. I like it. Aliens like, fighting gator I crab I like fishermen. where your head's at, starring Burt Reynolds. Starring like Burt fucking Reynolds and Buzz Aldrin. He's still alive, I think. Yeah, was, um, so, he was in a Transformers movie, yeah. Exactly. He was. He was in the third one as himself. It was so sad. It was. He had a scene with Optimus Prime. So they montage <laughs> it up. So they montage it up. They get ready to go to space, and the president addresses them for the final hype speech to get the world ready. Yeah. To get the world ready for them Fuck to go. yeah. This is it. This is... The moment of truth for the world. Mm. The president of the U.S. is addressing the world. Yes. And you're ready to go. Sort of. I address you tonight not as the president of the United States. Not as the leader of a country. Okay, shut up. All right. <laughs> I'm, 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 okay, you know what? I'm just going to pass it to a guy who did it better two years earlier and who they're clearly fucking ripping off. But as the day when the world declared in one voice, oh, we will not go quietly into the night. <laughs> we will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Oh. <laughs> There you go, Fuck everybody. Yeah. There you go. That is a thousand uh, times God better. Goddamn America for your ass. Independence Day. Okay, I'm sorry. They just Independence Day was '96. Yeah. They were clearly trying to make an Independence Day speech. They should have just done speech. that, honestly. Honestly. Cast Bill Pullman as the president and just give him the exact same speech. We all would have gone with it. Things start going off the rails from there, like off the rails. Like this part was supposed to be bad things that happens in the movie. It's just the last part of this movie. It's a whole last forty five minutes. And the thing is, first of all, you know, this film still wants to be set in some sort of reality, which I'm not sure of. I'm not sure which reality it is, you know, but, you know, some reality for sure. It yeah. wants to be somewhere along those lines. So when I see spaceships flying, like they're just jet fighters. Yes. My mind is completely thrown off. I love the Empire Strikes Back. OK, 
Okay, so now. Okay, by the way, so uh, uh, live live viewers, get ready for this. It's gonna be a fucking treat. All right, I'm gonna be a little self indulgent. I'm gonna let Again? this play. Yes, right. yes. I'm gonna let this play because I added music to this. And it works perfectly, and I only added it to the section I just showed you. Okay. But then it kept going. Okay. And it kept working. So for you, those of you live listening right now, you're gonna get to watch this while I get a drink of water because my voice is fucking gone, and I kind of planned for this. So it's a little two minute interlude with some nice tunes of what I saw when I saw this scene happening. So go ahead, uh, live listeners, enjoy. And for those listening on SoundCloud and those watching in post, you're gonna miss out. My favorite part is the guy who totally got like thrown out the front window and ate shit. <laughs> I'm just saying, like I literally was just gonna leave it and cut it at that part, but the fact that it went so well with the rest of it, just me dicking around. Gradual descent. I wanted that sanity. break to rest my voice one and two because that shit was fun. I'm gonna cut that out. So for those of you who are coming back, you fucking missed out. Mm, it was beautiful. But anyway, it was beautiful. That was just for me. Point being, it made that scene so much better. And that's what I saw in my I head think, was I think, I think you're onto something. You know, just splicing in like dialogue and music from other movies is making this a way better film in Sammy Gonzalez's book. Exactly. In, in all books, fuck in my book, just my book, everybody's book, that's better. Objectively, that what I just showed you is better. But with that said, Ian, it's about that time. It's about that time. Ian, what time is it? It's YouTube comment time. Oh, it's YouTube comment oh. time. Welcome, YouTube. Oh, my God, we're back actually answering because, hey, who's back in the saddle? Hey, oh, oh he's God. back. He went on vacation. He's been gone doing all his own things. But guess what? Look at that. I'm here. Ian's back. And we're yeah. here to read your comments from the last two weeks. I didn't make TJ do the comments, man. Really? Because TJ's not about that life. Okay. Mostly well, because he doesn't know what we're talking about but we're going to read the comments okay. for the star wars holiday special and we are reading the comments for home alone which you were not a part mm. of but before we do all that hit the like button hit the like button again and then hit it a third time that way it's liked leave a comment below for us to read next week and be sure to go to dtmerch.com that's right dtmerch.com there's a little thing right there look at it open a new tab dtmerch.com go ahead and go there get a shirt like this it's nice i think there's a special going on Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, but there's going to be new stuff coming you out. You should new probably stuff. know, but okay. I should probably know. <laughs> new stuff coming out every month, every new month, every month that happens. 2018, we're going to have a new design. So with that said, Ian, yes. let's go into these YouTube comments, shall we? Let's do it now. Joshua Tabak. If Trader Joe is going to be that kind of creepy uncle, the least he can do is pay Lumpy's way through college. We are, of course, talking about... The Star Wars holiday special oh. with Trader Joe. <laughs> when he buys, uh, when he buys his uncle that porn, uh, that porn VR. Yeah, exactly. So he's yeah. gonna buy Grandpa Joe porn. I mean, that's the least he can do. Pay his way, pay the lumpy's way through college, so he can try to like you know get something out of having to spend years watching his grandpa masturbate in the living room. Exactly. We need some solace for that. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have the Hollow Man or just Hollow Man. Star Wars needs more masturbating Wookies. Okay. Well, with that spelling in particular, well, yeah, masturbate yeah, yeah. like that. I mean. He's yeah. not wrong. Like, honestly, The Last Jedi, great movie, but it would have been a, a, a infinitely improved if there was a masturbating Wookiee. I think all things would be better with a masturbating yeah. Wookiee. Truth be told. Who, Home Alone? Home Alone, masturbating yeah. Wookiee, where he's watching it instead of Filthy Animal. Exactly. He could watch a Filthy Animal masturbate to a to a very seductive woman. Yes, thank there you There you go. That anyway, let's, let's, <laughs> let's go back with it. The real Mr. Robinson, damn, Sammy is really looking deep into the special. Mm. This had to be the funniest Sammy ain't seen shit since Jason X, and I can't get... Over how infectious Ian's laugh is. It's Aww. right up there with Martin and Brian Bush. We'll keep up the great work and stay toast as the real Mr. Robinson, up and coming oh, film creator. That guy's thank awesome. You. I like his stuff, even though I should watch it more. It's 2018, new year, new me. But Man. we have Crossface 2004 with the quote of last year from me. Okay. He's down with the chocolate. Man. Sam Gonzalez, 2017. I'm, of course, talking about uh, Lumpy? No. Yeah. Uh, uh, the grandpa. Itchy. 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 Yeah, scratching his own itch. Itchy yeah. in his own imagination while masturbating came yeah. up with a black woman. I'm saying I'm down with that because that's progressive for 1978. Eight. Eight. 1978. It's progressive. Uh, Eric Johnson. Our good friend Eric Johnson. Hey. His voice is like the smoothest cup of coffee. Oh, thank you, man. Oh, he oh. wants that smooth cup of coffee. That, that fresh Much cup like of Folgers. Much like Itchy did, you know. Yeah. <laughs> black coffee just real quick we're gonna finish it up and then we're gonna be out of here but we want to do some of those from uh home alone okay you were there you were gone let's do it kevin's parents and family were assholes in my opinion kevin was a savage and didn't care what came out of his mother's mouth next plus how much was the mortgage on their house 
you've seen Home Alone. You like Home I, Alone. I've seen Home Alone, but it's been like a good 10 years. So I, I really, I don't remember a lot of it. Oh, okay. Uh, well, we did point out last week, and a lot of people in the comment yes. section were mad about. I also didn't watch a show last week, so. It's okay. Inform me. What I am saying is white people drinking white milk mm. and pizza, okay. people were really upset about that, really? as I was on the show. Okay. But a lot of people were also mad about uh, people, uh, us looking into the movie very deeply. We were very complainy about the movie. Um, you know, people, why are they fucking nitpicking this movie despite its flaws? It remains a Christmas classic. So, you I know. mean, they're not wrong. The movie's called Home Alone. It's about Macaulay Culkin, like, beating up Joe Pesci. Like, you really can't dig into it that much. Right. And last but not least, or at least one of the last but not least, this is from <laughs> Anthony Leach. Wow, Sammy is 6'4 and has size 16 shoes. Sammy might not have seen shit, but everyone would see Sammy. Did you give out your measurements on the fucking show? I, I think a- accumulation of were you, times. Did, were you, like, comparing dicks with TJ? Like, what the fuck were you doing? Excuse me, it's my missile launch button. Oh, okay. And it's much bigger than TJ's, okay, all cool. right? Uh, uh, speaking of show. last but not least, this is the last one for the day. This is one for TJ, so stay out of it, Ian. <laughs> the brother looks like Matthew Slater from the Patriots. That's yeah, that he looks like TJ. Oh, I shit. looked at that and I was like, yep, TJ oh, in the NFL. Up. That is it for that. But you know what? Mm. Ian. Yes. Start of the new year. That's yes. it for the comments. Thank you for watching YouTube. Be sure to leave those comments. Be sure to subscribe to Double Toasted. Be sure to go to DTMers.com. Once again, it's right there where my hand should be. It's there. Go. All right. Bye, YouTube. Get out of here. Say bye to YouTube. Hey, bye, YouTube. All right. Ian is gone to YouTube, everyone. Okay, now we're fading out. I'm still talking, but guess what? It's going to fade out by the time I finish this thing.